Respected Chair, Mr. Dependent Sharma, Ministry of Youth and Sports, Honorable Chief Guest, Honorable Minister Purushottam Portal, Ministry of Youth and Sports, Distinguished Speakers from Restless Development, UNFP, uh, Save the Children and other networks, youth organizations and different uh, members from the youth community, and also noted personalities uh, on the audience from diverse institutions and capacities, media groups and dear friends. Uh, on behalf of Youth Movement in Nepal, I would like to congratulate MOIS for introducing Nepal uh, Youth in Figures December 2014 and also share my gratitude for having me invited here as a speaker to this launching ceremony. I'm glad to witness this particular milestone and I'm very much hopeful that with these youth figures at place, Nepal is now entering into a new era of youth development process. I'm confident that this figure will help the country build an empirical base to development needs and aspirations to bring about systematic strategies and structural inputs to solve youth issues, problems and challenges at large. Respected everyone, today I recall a few lines from the speech of the first Prime Minister of Malaysia from Independence, Tunku Abdul Rahman, during uh, the Asia Pacific Youth Seminar in 1991. He said, if we are to be true statesmen, we must take into account the needs, desires and ambitions of the generations for whom we plan our development. No architect would build a house without consulting the wishes of those who live in it and designing the house to the way of life. This is in fact a very powerful statement and very powerful insight for all of us who aspire to look into development process through youth perspectives. In a country where more than 40% of the entire population is youth, it is quite evident that development should go hand in hand with youth in order to maintain peace, integration, harmony and growth. Today we see the policy makers and development practitioners around the world have been studying youth population very seriously. Because, uh, because of the both challenges and uh, you know, problems it holds. And at the same time, the world is very conscious and aware about the implication of youth bulls over economic growth and political instability. In case of Nepal, after signing Comprehensive Peace Agreement in 2006, Nepal certainly raised its attention to youth population. Interim Constitution of Nepal 2007 suggested the state to pursue a policy to mobilize youth in the development of the country. And as a result, the establishment of Ministry of Youth and Sports and introduction of National Youth Policy in 2010 opened up new avenues for youth, uh, Nepali youth. However, the Nepalese youth movement or Nepali youth movement and all of us who are actively engaged as stakeholders and development partners could not produce much as expected and desired. One of the reasons that we all know is the lack of highest political will to deal with youth issues. And the other, which we would all agree, is the lack of empirical and evidence-led youth lenses to identify and, uh, the existence of problems because of which the country always struggled in youth-specific policies and plans. Although the National Youth Policy of Nepal confirms the need to pursue a concrete policy to materialize the potential of youth leadership in the economic, social, political and cultural transformation and ensure the active participants, participation of the youth in each and every process of state functionality, but it itself could not satisfy the thirst of Nepali youth because the policy during its formulation had lacked a comprehensive youth data and any implementation, action plans following the sentiments of national youth policy without a comprehensive uh, youth data which would definitely not be a worthy investment. <laughs> Respected everyone, in such a context the arrival of national youth policy in figures to us is a way forward to our long-standing struggles to bring about youth-specific policies, programs, and concrete plans. It is also a benchmark of development practitioners and youth activists like us to see our progress while working in the grassroots for the development of youth. The figure would now give us a clear picture of where we stand and the score we want to achieve in any given time. This is a stepping stone for us to transform ourselves from the traditional development approaches to more scientific one. As I went through these figures, I found a wide range of information and findings which can have greater implications in our working strategies. As mentioned, around 14% of Nepali youth are abroad for employment, which precisely call for a need of policy intervention. Similarly, just around 50% of the total male population and 40% of the total female population is it 16 to 25 years is economically active today, clearly suggests us to increase our investment on creating jobs and promote entrepreneurship 
to make youth independent and more confident in the system that they live in. Having said that, it is now high time that we maximize youth participation, provide a realistic guideline, a timetable and framework for governments and the private sector to work together to help youth, and ensure strong coordination among youth-led and youth-serving organizations and enhance service delivery. To do that, we must reap the benefit of this document to our ability best for youth-led or youth organizations and youth activists like us. This document helps in expanding research, promote agropolitan development and grassroots initiatives, steer localization of global opportunities, and facilitates us to collaborate with grassroots youth organizations to foster area-specific development and many more. In overall, Nepali Youth in Figures is certainly an eye-opener a window to the nationwide youth situations, a bar to measure our work in grassroots encouraging youth organization to produce results. I'm also hopeful that we will soon digitalize this document and make it easily accessible and comprehensible for larger audience out there. At the same time, this document also brings prospect to start conversation to introduce youth development index in later years. And at the same time, I remember two years back when we, uh, when we used to work in the United Nations Youth Advisory Panel, and still work, uh, we, had, we had given this suggestion to the UN, uh, UNFPA to start this kind of you know, data, to start working on this kind of data, and I'm very glad that the government itself has take, taken the initiatives, and we are now here with the data on hand. So I'm very glad that you know, the government is very responsive to our issues and aspirations, uh, and, and at the same time, I'm thankful, I'm thankful for the government. And in short, I see this report as an opportunity to avoid uncertainties and structure a roadmap uh, with joy and hope to perform better. I congratulate and thank MOIS, Restless Development, and UNFPA for a new insight. Thank you so much.